The next one I want you to try is waves. <clears throat> now, what I've done with waves is I've taken Bruchladi, which is non-peated, and I've taken some of our Port Charlotte, and I've married it together. So it's a medium peated single malt. The first one you had was non-peated. This is medium peated. I would say the peating level in this would be about 25 parts per million, between 20 and 25. Measuring phenolics is not an exact science. Uh, there's so many ways of doing it, but it's, uh, the regular method would be about 25 parts per million. So not too heavily peated, and it's very, very nice. The casks I've used in the maturation in this one are American oak, as, as normal, and I've used ca a whiskey that's matured in, some of the whiskey matured in Madeira casks. Uh, I'm a great fan of the Madeira casks. Uh, I actually think they're better in sherry casks. Sherry casks today are almost impossible to get. If you do get them, they cost about 350 to 400 pounds, uh, and they're so, uh, they're so, so difficult to find a good supplier. So with Madeira, I've never been let down. I prefer the flavor from Madeira. I know what I'm getting. Uh, it's just not so expensive. But, uh, so never be afraid to buy a bottle of Madeira. Madeira's great. On the nose here, remember I told you, don't add the water to later. It's completely different from rock. It's the smoke that's rising up there first. And the sweetness of the Madeira is there as well, which is great. It's really rich and you get a little bit of sultanas and raisin dates. It's lovely. Underpinned by the malt, it's really, really good. I'm going to add just a little water to it. which you should always do. And when you're adding your water, don't just dump the water in. Just do it the way I'm showing you here. Just watch the oil moving. Just treat it with respect. Just a little bit. That's plenty. And these tins are very handy. If you've got a Brooklady tin, it's absolutely great. And now it's ready for nosing. Ah, now the smoke is really pouring out of the glass. It's a great mixture of fruit, smoke, creme brulee. There's a little hint of the sea in this one, that citrus lemon uh, flavour that always comes through with the malts matured beside the ocean's edge. And everything we make is matured in Isla. I'm not sure, sure what the other guys do, uh, but every single drop we made is matured beside the ocean, which is like 50 metres in that direction. And that gives that fantastic, because uh, there's so much salt in the moisture, and that moisture is falling on the casks, you get this beautiful, the cask is like a lung. It breathes in and it breathes out. So it's breathing out alcohol, but it's breathing in salty moisture. It's doing this all the time, particularly in the summertime. The wood opens up, the whiskey penetrates deep. In the wintertime, the cask shuts down. The moisture's on the outside at about seven years, eight years. They come together. The whisky actually touches the minuscule uh, particles of salt and it pulls it back into the cask. And you get this fantastic citrus note, uh, citrus lemon and honey note on coastal matured whiskies. It's superb. And it's coming through there. So you've got this combination of honey, lemon, sultanas, raisin, smoke, American oak, sweetness. Quite complex. And it's young, so it's very much alive. This one's not sitting about this guy saying, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Waking up, you know, it's a really great whiskey. Uh, good party whiskey. You're a peat lover and you don't like it too heavy. This is perfect. It's an any time. It's one for standing at the bar, having a few shots or at home, uh, just enjoying it. Goes very well. This one goes very well, strange enough, uh, if you're having fresh oysters. If you get Isla oysters, shuck them. Get a little bit of this, the peated stuff, and just drizzle it over the top of the oyster. You have died and gone to heaven. Believe me, there is no other way to eat oysters other than a little bit peated malt over the top. That's your recipe tip for today. Cheers.